Now, tonight on our front, after a face-off with the utility companies demanding astronomical upwards, uh, upward review in the tariffs, we asked the civil society groups and other stakeholders in that sector whether the demands being made are justified. Uh, that particular conversation is what's going to happen on our front today. We'll take a break. After the break, I'll let you in on the people who will go and do discussion with me, from civil society to former PRC officers who are now prominently in uh, political party positions, through to the people who are fighting every day in the energy sector. Those are the people that will be occupying the seat and having this conversation on our front today. So you welcome back. It's been a full day of presentations and justifications from the various utility companies as they demand increases in the tariffs. The target being the media and other stakeholders in that particular sector. Well, joining me here in studio for the conversation is the boss of uh, Institute for Energy Studies, Nana Amwesi. And uh, is executive director, right? Institute for Energy Security. Yes, yes. Energy security, yes. Yeah, energy security is Nana Amwesi. The seventh, brilliant, I got it right. Nanaya, Nanaya Jantua, oh, let me say the Nanas properly. Nanaya Jantua is the general Nanaya secretary. Nanaya Achempim Jantua. Nanaya Achempim Jantua, that middle name should not be taken out ever. Nanaya Achempim Jantua is the general secretary of the Convention People's Party. Yes. And also, as you may popularly know, <laughs> a former director of public relations, a very long standing director of public relations, and a very vociferous and uh, visible director of public relations <laughs> of the Public Utilities and Regulatory Commission. Tonight, she'll be assessing what they've been doing in that position since he left it prominently. Of course, some years ago, you would have been the one here responding to questions on behalf of the PURC about processes, what you do, and the things you have done, whether you have demanded accountability. You still tonight. have your picture there. Yes, we still have your picture there. <laughs> <laughs> the, and we'll also be joined um, uh, electronically on Zoom by the executive director of the Africa Center for Energy Policy, hopefully. We also have a representative from some of these utilities. We, 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 we said this is a conversation for CSOs, right? But if, it's in their, uh, if they are willing to chip you a word or two, we'll be hearing from the various utility companies about what we know. So what do we know so far? We know that they have made several demands. Some of the demands are very interesting. These demands uh, range from Ghana Water Company Limited, which is actually for over 334%. We also know that ECG is asking for a DSC of some one of some 148 percent. We know NECO is requesting 113 percent. We know that VRA is making a demand of around uh, 37 percent. Then Greco is requesting 48 percent. I mean, there are others in, in that sector who have made other proposals too. But these are the ones touching the heart of many people in this country. So if you narrow it down, it's because these are basically water and power issues. We've heard from Ghana Gas, we've heard from GNPC, we've heard from the gas situation and all of the conversations surrounding that. All of those will be brought to the table maybe later on. But ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome once again. Thank you. Thank you, Raymond. How are you doing, Nanaya? I'm well. Very well. Yes. I mean, it's exciting when you're sitting on the other side, when you're not the one taking the fire. <laughs> when, because by this time, I would have been in a lot of, uh, you know, I would have been everywhere, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. But it seems the people there are having it easy. I'm, I don't see that. Oh. Now, but, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. So now, uh, now you're welcome to. Thank you. Basically, we start from in studio here. On the face of it, do you think these demands are justified? Face value, even before you dig deeper into it, do you think they are justified? They today have outlined a lot of reasons for it. You were there. Nanaya too were there. It was there. I mean, Ben, who's joining us, also was there. And it was so clear that some of them insist without the upward review, we can't stay afloat. They made the point so clear, almost the point of threatening everybody in the country, that if you don't want us to collapse, that at is, least. That has always been a mantra. <laughs> oh, that's always been the mantra. Eh? Please give us the uh, requested review. Nana, were you convinced we should give them? Well, uh, I think we should look at it from uh, two angles. Yeah. We're giving them, 
and how much are we giving them? Oh, okay. And uh, if you ask me, um, they made good justification mm -hmm. to a large extent. They did indicate that microeconomic indicators have changed and worsened, let me put it that way. The cost of the uh, distribution inputs, including the metals, uh, copper and aluminum, has gone up. They did also indicate that um, there, there is a high cost of power procurement. Mm -hmm. They buy it at a higher rate, more than what PURC approves. Mm -hmm. Um, they did bring into the conversation some losses, transmission okay. and uh, distribution losses. Mm -hmm. And so you could see that they are bleeding, basically, and that um, they are having difficulty raising the needed liquidity to maintain the system and operate the system efficiently. But you ask, uh, let's ask ourselves, transmission losses, distribution losses, whose fault? Is this ECG, for instance, um, takes almost about 29.7% of distribution losses, 19% commercial losses, 10%, 10.5% technical losses. I don't think you can transfer your inefficiency okay. to the consumer. Interesting. You are unable to collect your bills. Mm. It is not my fault. It's not your fault. But it's not our fault. Yes. It's, it's not they, our fault. They, we yes. are the consumers. Of course, the it's not our fault. The government of Ghana, the relevant state institutions, they are also the consumers. Exactly. It is the if fault. If we pay, mm. they won't be able to deliver one day. If they collect, they are selling. Uh -huh. You see, I am selling to you. At least you are at liberty to wait until I ask you to pay. Mm. So I don't sit down for you to call me and say, Nana Mwesi, um, no, it's time for me to pay you, so come and collect. I need to follow up, and I need to make sure that you are built well, and that you don't steal any part of the commodity I'm selling. But we see people stealing power, we see people getting the power at a wrong rate, we get people who get the power at the right rate, yet it's not collected. Let me give you an instance, um, and I will mention a name, but for the, from 29th January to now, I can give you a record that shows that on a prepaid meter uh, billing that comes to somebody's phone, the person owes 41 CDs, negative. Okay. Up to today, it's 41. The person has all been disconnected. Whose fault is this? It's ECG. And so in as much as you may have some justification to call for increments, you are also liable to a certain extent. If you're able to plug this uh, loopholes, the losses in your system, this is cash. Okay. This is revenue. But do they that need the money to do some of these things you're saying too? Do they need the money to do some of these things you're saying? Because I got the impression that they're even saying that losses will be reduced if you had the capital injection that we needed. It's always been the call. Everybody needs cash to do something. Okay. Okay. But then how efficiently are you going to run that very cash if I give to you? Mm -hmm. And so for me, I think there's the need for an adjustment because conditions have changed. And let me give you an instance here. Last Friday, there was almost a um, total shutdown in the country. You know what caused that? It started from a substation in Winneba. Lightning. The lightning arrestor at the substation could not divert the current, the high voltage to the ground. And so it came back on the line between that substation in Winneba to Abuade. And that voltage induced high current in the line, forcing T1 and T2 to trip and forcing car power and others to also shut down. That's an act of God. Act of God. But there is an arrestor that needs to work oh, okay. so that yes. it saves the situation. It failed. Tell me, how much is that diverter or arrestor mm -hmm. compared to what we lost as a country that, during that period? And so we believe and we genuinely believe that there's a, there's a cost for a form of capital injection liquidity injection into the operation, but not to that extent of 140%, 70% at a time like this, I rather. It does high. Uh, it's quite high. But there's an explanation, and, and I've already heard the ECG people suggest that when we say we need an increment of 140%, we're not asking for your bills to be increased by 148%. In fact, you're saying that all of this may translate to less than 30% increase in bills in any form. Is this true? Why are they talking about maybe the absolute um, figures? For instance, yes. if you say 148, we need to know the current um, DS 
DSC, the mm -hmm. distribution service charge. Okay. So if, for instance, the DSC is 10 pesos, if I'm doing 148, then I'm doing something like 28 pesos. Yeah. That is what they are trying to say. Yes. That is the, when you go to the absolute. But yes. whether the absolute, this is per unit. So if I do 100 units, how much am I paying at the end of the day? That's I mean, true. this is what we have to look at. And it is not also on the DSC. It's at the end of the day, it will be an accumulated tariff of an average of an average end user tariff between all of them. That's the generator, the distributor, and the transmitter. That's the transmission grid code. I see. So all they find an aggregate of all of it. But what So I mean, the one forty eight is not as scary as people are making it look. Well, oh, it's still scary. You say this is even early days yet. Yeah. Do you get me? They are still going through the process. Today I asked them, they said they would do um, public assemblies as well. And it will take some time. Yes, it we understand that yes. Thursday, the next week they are doing a lot of them too. Yes, it doesn't mean that they are giving 148. Okay. Do you get me? I mean, the process that Of course, this is what they are proposing. This is their proposal. And what? It might be rejected entirely, it might scaled be down. rejected entirely, it might be scaled down, if they might not. I mean, so many things can happen. Today, I'll let you take us into the minds of the PRC. When they get these proposals, apart from all of this public not talk... PRC. No, you let us into the minds of the people because you've been there before. But where are they? For a very long time, you were the face of the PRC. No, everybody knows that in this country. But let me bring in... I'm not the face of CPP. Yes, yes, of course. Let me bring in Ben Bwachi to this conversation. Uh, we will go to water, but Ben, there is a key point they seem to be suggesting to us in this country. These are survival tires. They are not tires to make us make profit or go beyond that. If Ghana decides not to pay at all, if PRC says you don't warrant these increases in any form, will these utility companies indeed shut down? I don't see why we should say we won't pay at all. I think that is not a realistic uh, okay. posture for anybody to assume. Um, we see the need for an adjustment. But we also acknowledge that the tariff is not the silver bullet um, to address the problems of the energy sector. And whilst I sat and listened uh, to the institutions today, I still saw the age-old challenge where people are thinking in silos, assume certain posture of an independent enterprise that wants to pursue its own agenda. And you don't see synergy even among state enterprises that should work together for the collective good of the public. And that is why you saw numbers flying all over and they were not speaking to each other because everybody is defending his out the out their territories, uh, you know. So, the tariff is just one component of the problems that we need to address uh, in the energy sector. We keep talking about the inefficiencies uh, in the space, and it's become like I mean, we know it. So let's move on. We come and promise the next time that we will reduce the inefficiencies when uh, the tariff period is up, and that is exactly what we saw today. Whilst we admit that some adjustment ought to be made, we need to pin down some, you know, deliverables uh, from these uh, states uh, on, uh, you know, yeah. utilities yeah. to ensure that yeah. into the future we have a handle over, uh, you know, the sector challenges, the inefficiencies, and also, uh, you know, the, 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 the practice where whilst you are trying to solve one problem, and people are just throwing more problems into the system, <laughs> all right, because they have power to do so. And that takes us back many steps, and we're not able to address uh, the challenges. And, you know, where we sit, it's a scary moment for Ghana, the way the power sector uh, is being managed. You know, how do you mean? Point. And I did indicate to you how the entire fiscal space is constrained because of decisions uh, in the power and the broader energy sector. Remember the famous ESLA that was supposed to be, you know, established to defray uh, debt, the debt that we yeah, accumulated yeah. Uh, in the past, uh, you know, the doomsaw period between 2014 and 16. You know, we were supposed to have defrayed the 2.5 billion 
uh, dollar debt uh, in five years. As we speak, we have collected levies, almost 10 billion cities, and we still have you know, that same amount outstanding. All right? So and I'm today, not, forgive me, let me probe this a little bit. I don't understand what you're saying. You're saying that we, we collected these levies, we have accumulated some amount of money, and yet you have not cleared the debt? The debt is still certain. So what we have done is really to move the debt from the books of ECG VRA, and then we took it to the bond market. All right? But it sits, the liability sits with the public. <laughs> because who will pay the bond when it matures? We are going to pay. So the extra levy that is being collected, all that is able to do now is to pay for coupons. And then the administrative and, you know, bond issuance, uh, you know, charges that they pile up. Those are the elements that is actually, uh, 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 you know, addressed at, at this point. So when the bond matures, we need to find a way to, to actually pay it. And we are going to be paying the ESLA, you know, uh, interest with the ESLA uh, going forward. But the scary part even is that beyond the existing debt, we are constantly creating more. Last year, you know, government government paid $1.25 billion for the under recoveries of ECG. And that $1.25 billion, we are not told, apart from uh, there are about $200 million that was raised on the board market. $1 billion, we are not told where it, it emerged from, where Ghana government got that money to pay. But we assume that the $1 billion that we borrowed from the European market to be able to renegotiate some of the power plants and bring the cost down is what they used uh, to, to pay uh, the, the debt for the year, uh, for uh, 2021. So the critical question is, if you create such quantum of debt in 2022, where is the breathing space for us to be able to offset uh, some of those losses? And that is where perhaps the new energy to push for an increment in the tariff is coming from, so that they can raise more money to be able to account for uh, the debt that is going to come. But remember that the $1 billion was also a loan. So if you add that one billion to about the eight billion cities uh, sitting on the Ghana bond market, you already have an outstanding energy sector debt close to uh, 20 billion uh, Ghana cities, all right? And we still don't have a handle on the debt accumulation. And that is why we are very particular about injection of new inefficiencies and poor decisions and not optimizing the space to ensure that uh, you know, we can address this um, sustainably. So but, let me get this straight. And I'm, I'm, I'm moving on because this question is important to me. If we give them what they are demanding, we won't clear the debt in the sector. Is that what you're saying? No, I mean, the debt will be outstanding. I mean, they are not even accounting for the debt. They are looking at the future. Okay. So they want a tariff that addresses uh, their investment requirements, uh, that addresses the sh estimated shortfall in their maintenance and operations, all uh, right? So that will not address debt. So the debt will have to be addressed separately, which ESLA today is incapable uh, of dealing with. So how do we even address that debt? It's not on the table uh, for us to, uh, uh, to consider. But again, coming back to even the operations, there is nothing assuring that I saw which really is going to deal uh, with the inefficiencies because we're told that ECG in a year has moved from 26% inefficiency to 29, all right? Then cross-check that with the investment presentation that they did. They are saying that between 2000 and 2018 and 2021, they had done about $390 million uh, investment that has been concluded. And they had a pipeline investment of about $270 million that they were doing. I don't know how much of that has been paid for, but in total, they have about close to $700 million investment afoot. Significantly uh, of that has been uh, 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 already completed. And the question that rang in my mind was this. I mean, when we were trying to look for private sector investment, uh, PDS was supposed to do about $500 million uh, investment over a five-year period. So they were to invest 
hundred million dollars each year okay. uh, to bring the efficiency that we required of them. So by five years, we would have expected PDS to come to uh, you know a loss level of around eighteen uh, percent. If ECG has done the investment that they are saying they have done, and we are still at twenty nine percent of inefficiency and loss, I mean, what is the guarantee that pumping more money would yield any results? So it, it's, it's a critical uh, situation that we find ourselves in. And I wasn't assured in any shape or form. There's a question I'm asking you on, on, on this point. Point. If not 148%, what figure will be acceptable to you? Well, I mean, PRC would do their work. And yes. the 148% is not um, the tariff, as I indicated. It's a... Uh, uh, the component of ECG's uh, tariff that they are asking for an adjustment. Remember mm -hmm. that we have generation component, we have transmission component, okay. and the regulatory okay. fees and all of it. So their component, if granted, will not even translate to 148% uh, uh, adjustment. I get your point. Uh, but, but I'm also, asking you, if not 148, what will be acceptable to you? From I what mean, you we heard. Cannot, we cannot put a number to it, but we don't I, have I a get model. You. We have, we have a model that runs, you know, okay. uh, uh, the optimal tariff. But mm. PRC will have to do a, a very de a, a detailed work trying to examine the issues that I'm, I'm talking about mm -hmm. and be able to put the inefficiencies uh, into broader perspective to see how we address them and how much can actually address them without also not punishing the consumer too much. Um, some investment has to be done with debt. And then over time, you smoothing is... Uh, uh, repayment uh, through the tariff. So Very we also well. have to do that job. But again, we need to have a sustainable approach to dealing with the uh, debt accumulation. Now, I'm coming back in studio because this conversation always goes to the table of what PURC will do. Assuming you had gone to occupy your position again at PURC <laughs> from today, <laughs> from, from, from today, <laughs> what, 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 go and go and I, I get you. Every okay, point in CPP will hit, will beat you up. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> now, now, let me get this I'm, point. I've been away for five years. You yeah, know. not very long though. A long and and uh, yes, and we have missed you. But the other point I'm making here is that what is PURC going to consider before they make a decision? Which meetings? Who are the major people who's the commission comment? You see, today they are in the process of um, consultations. Consultations. Yeah. They are doing the stakeholder consultations. I heard they will meet the um, parliamentary select committee on energy, parliamentary select committee on water and sanitation. They will meet um, the TUC is a key body. Mm -hmm. They will meet all of them, and when they put their, they also would have what they think should be the price. For all of them, not only ECG. Because ECG is the one that interfaces with us, theirs have become of interest. But we pay tariff from all of them. Okay. Do you get me? That, get as you. Ben said, mm -hmm. that would be the end user tariff. Mm -hmm. I mean, what they will do is that they will listen to everybody, and especially where the main issue will come from is the, when they go to the grassroots. The I public see. assemblies. The engagements with the people. Yes, because that place, a whole group today of people. Today was hot. Today was a very... Uh, today was more policy. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, But when yeah. you go to the grassroots itself, where you meet the people, the public, the, the market women, the hairdressers, the women, the, all and of who them. struggle to get meters, get their problems resolved that and all of that. That is when you hear them saying they will not pay. And when they meet you and they say they will not pay, then you are in a quagmire. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to do because this, it is real. They come out and they tell you that we will not pay. Some even can threaten that they will do illegal connections if you increase. Really? But I can't threaten to commit a crime. I am telling you. I mean, this <laughs> I mean, a, <laughs> it's, it's so... I am telling you, these are some of the things oh, okay. that you will go through because of the desperation. You see, if ECG is saying that they need money, Mm -hmm. If ECG is saying that they would collapse without money, I think we should also look at the quality of service KPIs. They are delivering. It is very, very important that we look at the quality of service. They, they, today, they were responding to some of those and said, if you give us the money, we'll improve in some of these areas. We have heard this thing for too long. 
I, I wish that a time is coming where before even any of the utilities come and say that they need money, they should tell us that the one you gave me in 2016, yes, it's a long time, six years ago. This one I used it for. A CD has depreciated, economic conditions, inflation is skyrocketing, price of crude oil is going up or gone up. Um, the generation Today I saw some interesting generation mix where I saw that they are doing more hydro than thermal. Yeah. Do you get me? And it was a bit interesting. I was wondering how they are doing. And they, they were talking about only... Um, but Akosombo. that's good, right? Yes, it's good. Akosombo and Pong. Mm -hmm. I, I was wondering where Bui was. Because Bui is not a base load. It's an, a picking plant. That it comes on when uh, during the peak period. So mm -hmm. I was wondering where Bui is. But I didn't see Bui anywhere. Um, if they are doing some more hydro then it's good okay because then it means that there's some tampering in there not tampering it's tampered down okay because we are not doing too much of the um thermal. the thermal the thermal which we have to use all these fuels but you see we should make them responsible all of them that the money that i gave you in 2016 and i showed it up a little bit what have you used it for i bought a phone out of it Okay. I, I bought a pen. Um, I fixed a transformer here, which is overloaded. I need to fix it more. Mm -hmm. I need to put in more um, conductors. I need to put in more arrestors. I mean, you need to tell us this is what I use it for. Because if you come and give me a beautiful presentation of all these projects you want to do, and most of the projects that they do, sometimes it comes out a donor funded. So you yeah. ask yourself, what, what happened to the capital the injection? Yes. Mm -hmm. So these are questions that I believe that we should ask. And one thing that also me worries me, and I said it, and I thought it wasn't answered, administrative cost. What percentage of your cost is administrative? I use it for meetings, for your it internal for meetings, engagements. For if your fuel, okay. the vehicles that you use, your medical cost, all, all of that. It should come out to break down. Remember when I was in PRC, VIA, for instance, they had some non-tariff activities, non-regulatory activities, yeah. and that is the school, the hospitals, and other things, and small businesses. We took them out of the tariff. Okay. And said that let them run on their own. Let them make their own cash out of it so that the burden is not on the consumer because it's a business. When people go to hospital at Akusumbo, Akuse, um, they pay. When the children go to Swakosombo International, they pay. Okay. So why don't you run it as a business? So we took it off. And also the issue of um, the inefficiencies, the losses. You know, there's an allowable loss um, between 10 to 21 percent, depending on the kind of system that you have. Mm. With this allowable loss, you can pass it through the tariff. But now they have gone off 9 percent or 8 percent extra. It is their own loss. They cannot pass it through to the tariff. I see. Yes, because the extra nine, it is, it, they have overpassed the benchmark. I see. So but then they have to find ways of paying for that. Yes, and that is where maybe they will use other things to pay for it. I, I, I get the point here. You get me. So, but some of these things were not so clear. That is, that, you see, one in I, their presentations. They covered they, up the losses bit. Okay. They just mm -hmm. glossed over it. But you have an allowable loss. In the good system where maybe in the U.S. or in the U.K., maybe your allowable, allowable loss is between 10 to 15. The tariff will cater for it. But if your system is not that good, maybe we do 21% or 20. When I was in PUS, it was 21% allowable. So if you do anything beyond, this is your cost. That's interesting. Yes. It can even take over your, it can even eat up your rate of return. That is your profit. Okay. It still goes against us. Mm, mm. Did you get me? So this allowable loss, the SPRC should ensure that they are giving KPIs. What I am seeing is that the SPRC should ensure that the utilities are giving some KPIs to go by. The KPIs should go with their tariffs. If you don't go according to these KPIs, you should not be giving the tariff. Well, I mean, I actually feel now that maybe there were more questions <laughs> that they should have answered that they didn't answer in this particular case. Especially maybe on we'll, the losses. We'll get some of them on to answer some of these questions. The losses side yeah. is very important that they come out to tell us how are they dealing, dealing with, with For instance, ones. they said that um, they are going to improve collection by 98%. You don't want words, so. 
If you are going to improve collection by 98%, are you going to deploy more prepaid meters? Okay. What is the strategy for you to reach... Oh, you're getting more workers. You're getting yes, people deployed to, to various areas. To yeah. various areas to read meters. And I believe it is time that we moved away from postpaid meters. Because it is also extra... Cost. But do they have the money to buy these prepaid meters? But we should look for the money. If, for instance, this tariff is going to say that we are apportioning... Because prepaid meters is money. Yeah. We are apportioning 20% of whatever mm -hmm. we get to just get in prepaid meters. They should even tell us that this 148 that we are asking for, what is it going to it's be approved for? This 133 percent we are asking for, this 320 something percent, what, how much cash are we going to get out of it? Projected, estimated. There's a last question I want to ask you now. Whose views matter most when you are determining The prices? consumer. Really? Yes. So we, when we say we are not paying into an I mean, mostly interest. when you are not paid, the, the, the PRC law says that... Is it that democratic? You should balance the two. Oh, I see. <laughs> yes. No, no one said that balance, was consumer. Should, but, but the consumer normally most times, uh, their, their voice is heard because they are going to pay. Can government tell PRC that, no, you can't do anything about this tariff? Government cannot. Really? The only thing government can do is... I mean, I'm not talking about what the law says. I'm talking about the realities of no, our politics. No, government cannot interfere. I don't know what is happening now, but when I was in PRC, we always had issues with government from pres President Kofo, President Rawlings, President Atamil's yes. President uh, Mahama, mm -hmm. all of them. The person who understood issues a bit was President Mahama. He oh, okay. had issues with his own cabinet because he thought that we were doing our job. But none of them thought that we were doing our job. All of them thought that we were destroying They tried to government. influence them. Yeah, no, they said you are destroying our government. I remember one of the times we did a tariff and we, all of us were almost sacked. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Do you get me? Yeah. So, I mean, these things are a bit tricky, but that is the other side of it. The actual thing is that what is also driving this request Tariffs are very contingent upon parameters. Yeah. And these are economic indicators that drive the tariff. So if these economic indicators are going haywire, then we have an issue. For instance, we did a tariff in 2016, and the exchange rate that we used, I think it was 3.9 or 4.2. Yeah. So imagine the difference, 7.8 at this time, as between 3.9. That is a lot. That's interesting. The, yes, the inflationary rate is, is skyrocketing. We have economic indicators not doing too good. The copper and the aluminium and all the things that they buy, they buy it abroad. They buy some cables here. It's still dollar. But is that not the main reason why they should not increase it? Because we, the ordinary consumers, also get affected by all of these factors. That is the if point. inflation is targeting us, twenty three percent, all of that, we are, we are directly affected by it. Yes, and so I'm, to ask us to asking, cough up more. So I'm asking, why this time? Why do we immediately after COVID, where? Everybody is now trying to find their feet. Why do we bring tariffs? Can't it wait to maybe December? No, no, December. Reality have caught up with us. You see, this time around, they are calling everybody to the table. Mm -hmm. When is they have for, always done that. No, but then over the past uh, three, four years. It's not true. They've all, okay, maybe they were not doing that. When of I course. was there, they were no, always No, that's there. when you were there. Yeah. Normally, mm -hmm. when they have to uh, decrease the price, is a politician that announces it. Mm. But when they have to increase, now yeah, they have mostly to call people and make it very appear wonderful. But which politician it's, announced a decrease? It's only PRC. Politician announced a decrease. The last time there was a decrease. Who announced P it? Which PRC uh, personality announced I thought it was the Finnish of Finance that made of that. Of course. That told us that we begin to relieve of a sort. In fact, was it not It so? was in the budget, eh? It yes. In fact, it was mentioned during that time that PRC would come out with a reduction and that we should respect it. Was it not the positioning? No, but I mean, that's <laughs> okay. But you see, but to be fair, you are not there. These are no, no, things, yeah. there. Remember, these are things we have done long ago. Mm -hmm. Gradually, we should be adjusting it. Okay, but for sake of politics, we have. But was there no reality? 2020 was a terrible year. What about this year? We are not, we are not what, recovering what, in 2020. What about this year? I can't justify 2019, but I'm talking about 2020 to 2021. Okay, justify 2022. Is it the uh, right time? Well, it's not equally. It's it appears that, hard. but the issue is. If we, if we don't support them, mm -hmm. we'll wake up one day and there won't be light for us to consume. That's real. That's real. Look at what happened the last time. I said one lightning arrester filled. And we're plunging darkness for It makes it look like hours. it's a very small thing that could have been easily purchased and dealt with. And that we all could be spared the problems with that you small see, purchase. You see your car. Yeah. Okay. Don't change your filter when it's due. Don't change your oil. 
postpone it. One okay. day your car will ground to a halt. Yeah. The, That's just the what grid happened. is also a machine. Even human beings break down. Mm -hmm. Machines break down if you don't maintain them. And so if you go about your preventive maintenance, mm. you go about your plant maintenance well, then of course you are keeping the integrity of the machine sane. But if you don't do, very soon the integrity will be compromised. Then we'll have problems. And so these are things that we should have done for a long time, but they were waited and it's been compounding and compounding. Today, it's caught up of us. Mm. So if you ask me, the time is ripe. For us to do we it do now. Adjustment. It's now or never. We should, we should, it should come with a human face because we are not in good time either. I'll take a break. When I come back, we'll continue this conversation on Upfront. It's, we are trying to ask people who understand the sector whether all of the arguments being made by these uh, uh, utility companies are justified and they deserve the money involved. You welcome back to our front. Tonight, we've been trying to find a way around the various demands from the utility companies. You know that of ECG. You've heard of Gota Company too. Now, joining us in this conversation is a representative with the Ghana Water Company. He did the presentation today at the forum, and this forum was to make sure that people understand the CSOs engage directly. It was a frontal face-to-face -face attack from they take the reply and engage properly on these matters. That person that I'm talking about is Seth Eric Atipa. Mr. Atipa is the manager in charge of corporate planning, monitoring, and evaluation. Now, something you presented caught my attention is to do with you having a huge debt and you need full cost recovery to be able to stay afloat. But it's also part of your debt is interesting. Illegal mining is making it difficult for you to provide water for people in their homes. How so? If you can hear me, Mr. Atipa, yes. If you are mute, the question I'm asking is, how is illegal mining affecting the provision of water? And what component of what we are asked to pay today is due to the treatment costs that the illegal mining is bringing on board? Let me, let me ask Ben Boache, the Ghana water situation. Is it so precarious that we need to fix illegal mining before we can get Ghana water the kind of help they need now? Uh, equation, because I haven't really followed. Um, you know, and our work really doesn't cover. Yes, uh, but, but, but they presented something very interesting about how they are struggling to stay or do the kind of work they are doing because of illegal mining. That's what's actually about it. Oh, yes, yes, I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I think their overheads have really gone up uh, because they have, they're having to uh, treat. Hello, Raymond. You know, all right, I think he's on now. Oh, Hello, Raymond. Oh, oh yes, um, Seth, thank you so much. And thank yes. God for getting you through to us. I was asking a question about illegal mining. I hope you got that question. Yes, I, I got it. Brilliant. So, so yeah. Good, good evening to you and your, and your listeners and viewers as well. Uh, <laughs> if I get you right, we are trying to find out uh, if illegal mining has an impact on our operations. I do know it has an impact. I'm talking about the scale of it. Well, we can say substantial. We can say substantial. Uh, in, in that, it is increasing the amount of chemicals we use in treatments. It is also breaking down our very sensitive pumps. It is also causing a significant amount of uh, silting, which we have to dredge at huge costs. And uh, yes, we can say, you know, when there is so much silt, we actually lose water we have abstracted for treatment. And in some cases, about 40% of water is lost. This water can be pushed into the supply system and uh, our consumers will have it. And don't forget that uh, this, this water is abstracted with energy, which means that you have lost that energy as well. So mm. on so many counts, uh, illegal mining affects the water company. Is that a quantum to the cost that it brings to you? How much is it? Well, I can simply say that uh, from um, a chemical budget of about 50 million, 
per annum, we are going to 65. So you can see that uh, this is about 15 million more. And if you do the ratio, it is about 20%. So that is significant. But, I mean, we can't push all the problems on uh, illegal miners, right? For yes, many, yes, for, yes, for yes, many yes. consumers, your business really doesn't care about collecting the money. We struggle to get you to bring your bills. If you bring okay, so, them, so, th there's a lot of difficulty in having to pay to you the bills that you have to be paying. Exactly what are you doing differently in that area too? Okay, so that is a, a different issue. So uh, let's, let's say that we, we are done with the pollution matter. Yes. Now, um, collection of bill is also a different thing altogether. And it doesn't really count to our inefficiencies because we, we make budgets with what we call our revenues, which you can call invoices or sales, okay? So the water we sell uh, is generated into bills. And this bill amounts to, let's say, about 1.2 billion a year. This is the money we use to make our uh, budgets, to run our tariffs, etc. cetera. Uh, uncollectibles or, or arrears, it's, all, it's already incorporated in this amount. And therefore, when we collect, it adds up. Uh, it doesn't, it's not got much to do with, uh, with whether we have money or not, not having money because it's already captured in the revenue. Immediately we invoice you, it is captured as revenue. That is, that is how we, 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 I, I, we I, I, I get your point. Now, the, there's an explanation to this 330%. How much of this is purely because of what you have to give to ECG? ECG is about 40% of our revenues. Okay. All right. So if the S go up, your own tool will have to go up, right? Yes, please. It's, I, it's I, I'm, I'm grateful for your time so that I don't consistently have that problem on the Zoom. I thank you so much for joining us. I'm coming back in studio here. The, the water problem is a separate problem, yes. but it presents its own challenges too. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with that? We need to... Um, there should be enforcement mm -hmm. because this one is a, a whole um, everybody should be involved okay government should make sure that the laws work the the people in the areas where galamse is very rife should also make sure that galamse is stopped because it is a big problem it is not helping there's something them. they said that if we pay them what they're asking for by 2026 everybody will get water and what happens to Galamse? Are they saying by they'll do a lot of work to ensure that there's no um, Galamse activities? I get impression from them that Afro Galamse is outside their control. Yes, yeah, so so and it's creeping in into okay. so many other areas. Mm -hmm. Even apart from that, the activities at the banks of some of these rivers, as yeah. the MD said, the wager. It's also problematic. Sand winning along the white um, water. It is also problematic. So they shouldn't. You don't think they meet the 2026? 20, uh, no, I'm saying that they shouldn't use words that they are be unable to because these things are beyond them. Okay. It, it, it takes a multi stakeholder approach, it takes government's commitment, it takes the commitment of the people themselves not to, I mean, do the, some of the things that they do. So if in Ghana Water say that by 2026 they will ensure that everything is okay. Everything is okay within the space of the limited water that we have or within the space of ensuring that the water is not polluted. What we are looking at is that we, everybody should ensure because we are all at risk. Okay. By a I certain time, if we are not careful, we might not even get water to drink. Nana, will you permit me to take you back to the generalized conversation we are having? Now, from Ghana Gas, true to the other demands that have been made on the table, how do you convince the consumers that they need to pay more? and that regardless of the current conditions they find themselves, this is what money that we need to give these institutions for them to do their work. How do we do that? Well, uh, it's for the utilities to do that. 
<laughs> that's for PRC to do. Okay. That. We don't. Speak. And how how, don't speak. How, how, would, how would they be able to do this when people see the inefficiencies, when they see the difficulties that you're running the system with? See, you 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 need to convince them. Okay. For example, when we came here, you asked whether we were convinced. Yeah. But uh, you need to convince. It didn't sound so convinced. <laughs> of in course. Fact, you made because it look like look. We got see, the main problem is that we need to give them the money, and that if it was just convincing you, they couldn't do so. Yes, because there are some things they load that they try to load onto themselves. For instance, mm -hmm. let me give you this. Um, the accent that uh, we pay them street uh, lights, in, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it should tight, be captured tight. in their uh, tariff structure. Yeah. No, I think they can skip that because government is paying uh, public lighting. Public light and uh, through the levy, if they are paying up to 30% and you think they don't pay the rest, or you, you have to take up the rest, just build government. Don't put it in your tariff structure. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Escape that. It's unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go and like Neko said, they said they build government. Why would you want to load yourself with this wahala? And so I think they should go back to consumers, convince them, and then assure them that when they give them uh, two pesos, three pesos, they will put it to good use, and that will be able to um, sustain the grid and ensure that we have reliable power supply. There, there's a question asked when we're making this <clears throat> point about why now and why we should actually be paying now. Somebody asked a question about whether it was irresponsible we compiled for all these years, only to put it on the people now. Is that what you think too? Ooh, whether you know. think it was irresponsible for us to have waited for 2019, 2020, 2021, and only to come in in 2022 with huge, uh, what do you call it, possible reviews. But all this, what were, what were we doing? I'm sure uh, before uh, they changed to the quarterly review, there was the automatic uh, adjustment. adjustment formula. Were we applying it? If we were, we would not be here. And so I think that it's, it's, it's our own uh, you know, laid back attitude. It may be political interference as well. And uh, you give us this hard bullet to bite at this time. Maybe you could have fed us gradually as we go along, and we would have felt, we would have felt the, the pinch. Should we revert to the uh, quarterly review? Should we now go Let's back cross to... this path. <laughs> Before we, we get to the end. No, 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 quarterly I review. I mean, quarterly review, these are words. So, so when they said they've changed it to quarterly review, automatic adjustment from like quarterly review is the same thing. Really? It's the, yes, it's the review every quarter. Okay. And I believe that they should have done it. I mean, it is just a way to shore up the tariff so that when it comes to a major tariff review period, you do not have to do too much. But on the issue of street lightning, there's yeah. a street lightning levy. That's the, the public tariff. lighting levy. Yes, it is in the tariff. But what happens is that it goes to the district assemblies. Mm. In the district assemblies, they don't even give it to the utility. So at the end of the day, the burden of I mean, street lighting comes onto the uh, utility. So I think what they want is that they want the street lightning tariff should be added to their tariff so that they are the people managing the street lights instead of the assembly. I get you, but let me take final words from Ben Boachi on this need for us to do, go back to your regular reviews so you don't shock people with a major review again. Ben, if you can hear me. Yes, um, I can hear you. I think it's, it's quite relevant for us to do that periodic uh, review. Uh, but that should also come with periodic monitoring of performance and ensuring that efficiency is improving. So we are not just throwing money at the utilities and they are abusing it. We should also find a way to um, examine their investment and see how optimal those investments are. And not just say we spend X, Y, Z amount uh, in a particular year and that has to uh, you know, come back into the tariff without addressing the key uh, performance concerns that we do, uh, we do have. So yes, uh, it, we have to do regular okay. uh, adjustments and prevent you know, just coming for the juggler with this uh, 149, 148 uh, proposal Wait, that uh, uh, ECG and the rest are proposing. Thank you so much. And Ben Boachi is the executive director of the Africa Center for Energy Policy. We've been joined in studio two by the general secretary of the Convention People's Party. Uh, some time ago, the, the best party in this country, the most prominent. It is still the best party. In the country. First Republic. It is still the best. Okay, well, <laughs> then, then, then Nana Mwesi is the executive director of the Institute for Energy Security. I won't get it wrong this time around. Lady and gentlemen, 
Nana and Nana, I'm grateful for your time here in studio. Yeah, and thank you so much for also joining us on Upfront this evening.